Pro. Up to the minute tips and tactics for low, low two on your Nintendo Entertainment System. And the Force will be with us as our Game Lab Gonzos check out the new Star Wars action game card. We'll take a look at what's hot at the arcade with Who Shot Johnny Rock. All this and more on Game Pro. So let's kick it. Hi everybody, welcome to Game Pro. I'm JD Roth. JD! Stop! And I'm Brent On. And dudes, you guys don't want to be anywhere else but right here, right now, because today's show is jam-packed with some stuff that you are not gonna believe. Hey, that's right, B-Man, because our Game Lab goons have been in electronic shock all week long, taking on some of the newest game cards to hit the market. And as always, they've got all the secrets you want to bust the game bank. I know what you're asking. Where do these guys come up with this stuff, right? Game Pro Magazine, that's where. The source for all the important gamer info. B-Man. Yeah, dude, check it out, buddy. I just had this preview of the 16-bit game segment, and dude, it is serious. It will blow you away. Now, if you guys out there think a sandwich sounds mighty tasty right now, chill, because we are going to kick it to SWAT! <laughs> Dude, I just told the dudes and dudettes out there in TV land that we were going to kick it to SWAT and to chill on the sandwich, and look what you're doing. Ah, uh, my fault, really. Sorry. Um, I'm on my way. Don't eat that. SWAT time. Secret weapons and tactics. I'm here in one of my favorite places, SWAT World, with our first of many secret weapons and tactics to come. First up today is a totally exciting discovery for Adventures of Lolo 2 for the NES. Sup, buddy? I'm busy, dude. If you thought you'd seen it all in this game, think again, because our Game Lab eggheads have discovered four extra rooms that until now were housed in secrecy. Check it out. In the title screen, select the password option. If you select Pro A, check it out, you get to chomp your way right through a forest. Cool. Pro B for still more points. And Pro C to challenge the Reign of Fire. Last but not least, Pro D, to take on the water hazards. Cool ride. Here's a major weapons tactic in Valus 2 for your TurboGrafx-16 CD-ROM system. How about any weapon you want, any time you want it? We're giving it to you. Watch. Okay, you're heavy into level one of Valus 2. You're up against some screaming meanies. Now, if only you had the missiles or weapons or maybe some cool shields, you'd be great. Well, now you can have them. Here's what you have to do. First, hold down button two and press run. This will pause the game. Now press select one, then two, then one, and now hit run. You can now choose any weapon or item in the game by using button 1 to select items and button 2 to select the perfect weapon to beat the bad guys. I gotta see that one again. First, hold down button 2 and press run. This will pause the game. Next, press select 1, then 2, 1 again, and now hit run. Select the weapon or item of your choice by using buttons 1 to choose items and button 2 to select weapons. Go get them! Hi, my name is Matthew Peckman from Miami, Florida. And I have a question for the Game Pro Pros regarding the, the Nintendo game Maniac Mansion. I finished the game by putting the meteor on the trunk of the weird Edsel and blasting it into space. But I've heard there's another special ending to the game. 
Where are you to get that? You know what, bud? You only heard part of the news because there are actually six, count them, six endings to Maniac Mansion. Now, while you've already discovered one of the endings, here's a couple of our other favorites. To see the second ending, kill off Dave by taking some radioactive water from the pool and put it in the microwave oven. Then have Dave turn on the oven, then open the door, and out your mundo, I'd say Dave's history. Now, once Dave is done for, finish out the game and you'll see a new variation on the first ending. In this one, Dr. Fred will say something entirely different in the end. Now, of course, Dave won't be around to hear it. Ha <laughs> ha. In another of our favorites, have Wendy retype the Meteor's manuscript, which you'll find in Dr. Fred's office. When she's done typing, mail it off to the publishing company. The publishing company will be so impressed by the manuscript that they'll award the Meteor a lucrative contract, which you'll find in the mailbox outside the mansion. The Meteor will be so thrilled to be an author that he'll promise not to be evil any longer. He even instructs Dr. Fred to release the prisoners. Now here's the new ending. When Meteor goes on a talk show to promote his book, the Meteor police show up and cart him off to jail despite his change of heart. You may remember that I said there are six endings to Maniac Mansion. We've shown you two. Now, if you want to see the rest of them, you're just going to have to wait till future episodes, bud, so we got you hooked. It was a good question, Nell. Your game pro tees in the mail. Remember, we love watching the game maniacs over here scramble with your questions, so keep them coming, okay? Just get gutsy, get a video camera, and fire away. And then send the tape to our address, and if we put you on the tube, the game pro tee is yours, all right? Here's the address. Game Pro, P.O. Box 1678, Venice, California, 90291. The Force will be with you when we return on Game Pro! Hey, bud! Oh, rock and roll! Secret weapons and tactics. Whoa! Oh. I made it. Whew. I'm back inside SWAT World, and I've got a major tip for you all today in the fast action-adventure game Strider for the Genesis game system. Now, this tip ought to help you stay in the game a whole lot longer. Whoa! You can be totally untouchable when it comes to the effects of the lasers at the second reactor if you stand so the capsule on the ground touches your foot. Check this out. The lasers will actually pass right through you without inflicting any damage at all. Extremely cool. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, lived a young Jedi warrior named Luke Skywalker. Now Luke, along with the help of some of his rebel buds, led the rebel forces in a battle against the evil Galactic Empire and its invincible Death Star. You guys follow me? It's... Star Wars, dude, yeah! And at long last, this classic movie has become a video game card for your NES. So check it out. See... You play the part of Luke Skywalker, and you begin your adventures on the planet Tatooine, where you get to explore the caves and visit the famous cantina scene, just like in the movie. You also get to break into a Jawa sand crawler, and you take her for a spin. Remember those little slimy creatures that ran around going, zubah, 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 zubah. Anyway, expect a lot of jumping and shooting at this stage of the game, which serves as a good warm-up for what's coming up later on. Next, you get aboard the Millennium Falcon, studly ship and you pilot your way through the asteroid fields. And where are you going, bud? Oh no, it's the Death Star! Dun, dun, dun. That's where you hope to rescue Princess Leia. Remember her? She was that lady who had those big bagels in her hair. Now, she's being held captive by none other than the most heinous of bad guys. Darth Vader. And then, you reach the Death Star, you get to muck around in that nasty trash compactor. Then you'll engage a TIE fighter squadron as you sit at the controls of your Alliance X-Wing fighter. Of course, Luke's not alone in his battle against the Empire. 
You got Han Solo, R2-D2, C-3PO, and his old buddy, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Use the Force, Luke. <laughs> now, keep in mind that all the action in this game is controlled by Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Princess Leia, and each one has different levels of blaster power. Now, once you find Han and Leia, the game will let you switch around from character to character so that you can choose who's best prepared for any given battle situation. Yes! That's very nice. So, how do we rate Star Wars? You remember the system. We rate graphics, sound, challenge, and overall fun factor. Now, the graphics and animation are better than most, but they don't hold up throughout the whole game. While there are good-looking close-up scenes of the more famous heroes and villains and some great background and cinema sequences, the creatures and other bad guys are just okay. We don't like to diss a quality game, but we found the music not as exciting as we had hoped. While the sound effects are good, there's really nothing you haven't heard before. We can say that Star Wars is one of the toughest game carts around, though. The bad guys are aggressive, and most of them take mucho hits before they go down. The deal is, if you aren't prepared to put in some serious playtime to blow this battle star out of the sky, you might as well move on to another game altogether, because this cart takes skill and effort. But... Take heart, because the cart will let you finish the game without even completing every task they throw at you. Finally, Star Wars is a rousing action cart, which incorporates some of the best gameplay features of other games we've played. If you go for space battles, side view action, or role playing, there's a little something that everybody can enjoy in Star Wars. Yes! I really like that, Star dude. Wars, did you? Star Wars, did play Star Wars, bud! <laughs> <laughs> I love this place. You know, all the game action just doesn't take place on your television or handheld screen. Sometimes you got to get out of the house, dudes. And when you do, where do you want to go? Shopping with your mom? Huh, no way, Jose. You're going right to the arcade, and when you get there, you're heading to the hottest action in the building, right? Well, here's my man with arcade history in the making of the introduction of the new interactive laser CD, Who Shot Johnny Rock? B-Man. Yeah. All right, check it out. This one comes from American Laser Games. And those are the dudes who created arcade greatness when they introduced Mad Dog McCree. And that was the interactive game of the Old West, all right? Now, who shot Johnny Rock? That one drops you right in the middle of a 1930s-style detective mystery. And you're the detective. This is very cool, so check it out. At the start of the game, Johnny Rock's this nightclub singer with a questionable reputation. And he's been gunned down in his club. It's up to you to solve the murder and win the gratitude of the game's heartthrob, the lovely Red, who just happened to be Johnny Rock's bae before he got wasted. Now, there are four main suspects in this murder case. Lockjaw Lil, Measles, Pox, and Mumps. Sounds like an advertisement for a contagious disease clinic, doesn't it? Huh. Now, as you investigate the case, you shoot your way through the bad guys, survive high falls and explosions, and make it through a number of other stunt scenes gathering clues. All the while, you're moving and grooving your way through the city to get to Johnny Rock's mansion. So, dude, check it out. There are multiple avenues to follow up and a lot of different outcomes that can happen in this game. But no matter which way you go, you can't solve the crime without going through the rest of the treacherous murderer's row. Now, get past these bad dudes and the babe is yours. Ha, I like that part. This is the latest in arcade laser CD action, and I have to say that it is as excellent as excellent can be, and I always win. Besides, Give me that gun. That gives you roses. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, gamers everywhere. This is Max Flager of Schaumburg, Illinois, and I've just finished Vigil on Tape for the Turbo Graphics 16. My name is Steven Krogman, and I'm from Boca Raton, Florida, and I achieved a score of 1,184 points on Nintendo's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade version. I'm Tim Zeldgum from Cedar Grove, Wisconsin, and I finished Double Dragon 2 for the NES. All right. Happened in scores today. Good gaming, you guys. Oh, yeah. Your Game Pro Magazine subscriptions are on the way, all right? And remember, if you want to win, you've got to send them in. Hyperzone for SNES, next! Yo, yo, JD and SWAT's about to hit your screen. Yeah! Secret weapons and tactics. 
Here's a SWAT tip to let you begin Adventure Island 2 for the NES from any island you like. That's right. When the title screen appears, pick up controller 1 and press right, left, right, and then left. Be sure to do it in just that order. Next, move over to the A and B buttons and press A. Then B. Hey, get off of there. Then A, and then B. Again, huh, you gotta do it in that sequence. Finally, hit start and pick the island paradise of your choice. Okay, again, to get the island of your choice, on controller one, press right, then left, then right, and then left again. Next, hit the A, then B, then A, and then B. Finally, hit start, and you go to whatever island you like. But if you don't mind my suggestion, my favorite island paradise can be found at Dinosaur Island, where you'll encounter some of the scariest reptile baddies in the game. You ought to check it out. It's pretty cool. Whoa! Hey, hey, watch, watch it! Here's another mega winner for bad dudes on the NES. Whew, that was bad. If you want to start out the game with 64 lives, try this tip which ought to keep you playing well past your bedtime. My bedtime? Your parents' bedtime. Whoa! First, bring up the title screen. Pick up controller 2 and press the B button. Then the A button. Next, go to the same controller 2 and press down, then up, then down, and then up. You have to do it in exactly that order. Now pick up controller one and press the start button and you will be seriously powered up and ready to fight. Very cool. Check this out. 63 lives plus the one you're on, that would make 64. A totally hot tip. Here it is again right before your very eyes. Super Nintendo Entertainment Systems in the stores. You're stoked. And that's where you're going to find some super 16-bit playing power. Now, you're also going to find some awesome game cards to run through the machine, so you're double stoked. Now, let's take a look at Hyperzone. This is a seriously happening new game for the SNES, okay? Now, here's the story. You find yourself in the not-so-distant future where mankind has completely fried the planet Earth. The place is just a mess, okay? Completely unlivable for human beings. Sort of like my bedroom on a Sunday night. Huh. Now, the Earth's Council only hope is to save the human types, and they have to colonize this asteroid belt located somewhere between Mars and Jupiter. The bad news is that the asteroids the Council has in mind are populated by a mutant race of not-so-friendly, half-organic, half-mechanical beings. I'm beginning to wonder if these dudes are related to our producers. Psych. Now, the only way the humans are going to make it is to wipe these mutants off the asteroids, okay? Now, all this action takes place in a one-player arcade-style game which unfolds over eight different areas of play, and each of these are populated with a different breed of mutants and presented with this forward-scrolling 3D perspective that's sort of like um, Space Harrier on the Genesis system. So, and you're seated at the controls of a space vehicle, and it's moving at light speed, and it leaves you very little time to take in all this weird intergalactic scenery that's going on. All there is between you and mutant madness is your control panel and monitor, and you're using this to control your speed, your power, and your hyperspeed blast. Now, as you're picking up these points by blowing away the bad guys, you'll earn the use of more powerful space vehicles with more sophisticated and deadly hyperblast weapons. Now, if things were not tough enough, considering all these mutants are coming at you at lightning speed, to make things even more difficult, more exhausting, more painstaking, you're constantly running into all this planetary phenomenon, such as electrical fields at the most inconvenient times. Major bummer. Now, if you reach the end of an area, there's no getting out until you defeat one of these eight bosses which patrol this mutant-infested asteroid belt, okay? Now, the concept is simple. Fast-paced arcade-style shooting action with awesome 3D graphics. You're gonna like it. I guarantee it. You will be stoked. We've got our game goonies over here working on some tips, so I think you should watch some future episodes and find out how to really kick some tail, bud. Stoked! Stay at your screen, because 
we've got killer secret weapons and tactics to beat the big boss Loki in Ghouls and Ghosts. When we come back on Game Pro. Game Pro's back. Let's kick it. <laughs> I'm Silas Shaw from Aberdeen, Washington, and I have a great way to beat Loki, the big boss in Ghouls and Ghosts, for the Sega Genesis. First, get the Psycho Can from Volcar. When you finally get to Loki, jump on one of his feet. When he raises his leg, then you'll be able to fire repeatedly at his chin, even though his leg is moving up and down. I promise you, you'll beat him in a snap. Good tip, and to show you our appreciation, we're going to be sending you your very own Game Bro Tea. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's right, and that's all the time they're letting us have this week. And besides, our game techs are fried. That's Anytime. right, bud. So we'll catch up with you next time with some new game previews and all that cutting-edge stuff that you need to know to be in the know. Yeah. Remember, we're looking for those hard questions and viewer tips from you, so here's the address, okay? Game Pro. P.O. Box 1678, Venice, California, 90291. Okay, for Brennan and I am J.D. Roth, we're going to put it on pause till next week when we see you right here on Game Pro. Peace, dudes.